What's up guys? Today we're going to do a video on welding symbols. And this will be an introductory vi video to welding symbols. We're going to talk about the basic elements of the system, um, how everything works, uh, the locations on the actual weld symbol, and uh, what they represent. But we're just going to mostly focus on fillet welds and uh, you know locations for length and arrangement in this video because there's a lot of information uh, just with that alone, um, you know, and then we'll get into other types of welds and uh, specifically groove welds in a later video because there's a whole bunch more information that can be contained within a groove weld symbol. But the, the uh, things about the basic elements of the system and how they work will, uh, will pertain to any type of welding symbol, okay? So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, the, the first thing that we look at when, we, uh, when we're looking at a welding symbol is the, the basic, um, the foundation of the welding symbol is what we call the reference line, okay? And it's this horizontal line. It's always horizontal, okay? There's no, uh, there are no welding symbols that go this way. It will always be horizontal, uh, and it can be located anywhere in relation to the actual joint. So we could have you know, uh, a, a reference line with the leader line going up. We could have it over here or over here. It doesn't really matter, but the, what we call the leader line right here will always point to the actual joint that we're talking about. Because on a weld mitt, we could have various other joints all around it, but this weld call out or welding symbol will only refer to the, uh, the actual joint that it's pointing to. And there are some variations on that, which we'll talk about when we, when we get to uh, this area here of the welding symbol or the tail, okay? But we're going to start with the reference line. The reference line is the foundation of the welding symbol. It carries the bulk of the information about the weld itself, okay? So when we're talking about the reference line, uh, <clears throat> the first thing that we always want to look at is side significance, okay? So there's two different side significances to the reference line. The bottom of the reference line will be what's referred to as arrow side. And the top of the reference line will be other side. And that never changes, okay? It doesn't matter if, the, if this weld symbol is over here if it's down here, if it's down here, does not matter. It will always be top of the reference line is other side, bottom is arrow side. And that tells us where we put our weld, which is very, very important because we have two different sides to this joint here. And let's say they're only calling for one weld, could be very, very important that we put it on one side versus the other, okay? Could be the difference between you putting down a weld and everything being great and you having a fine day, or, putting it on the wrong side and not being able to configure that differently to kind of save your mistake and having a real bad day because you spent half of it grinding a weld out, okay? And I've been there and that's no fun, okay? So this kind of stuff's important. So that's where we always start with the reference line. We want to see what type of weld we have and we want the side significance. That should be very, very important. So always try to slow yourself down, say, okay, what's the side significance? Let's really make sure that I know this before I continue. Because sometimes we just take a look at a weld symbol and kind of make a snap judgment without thinking uh, too much about it, and that's how we run into mistakes. So I'm going to go ahead and put a, uh, a, a fillet weld symbol, which looks like a uh, triangle on one side. Okay, It looks just like a fillet weld. A fillet weld symbol will always be going this way. Okay. So if you see one that actually looks like the tail of an arrow, uh, that is not correct, okay? So it should always be flying to the right off the page. So even if we had a weld symbol over here, another fillet weld symbol over here, it would face the same direction, okay? It will always fly to your right. Um, the, the arrow will always fly to your right off the page. At least that's how I remember it. Um, just so that I was always drawing them in the in the right way and looking like I knew what I was talking about sometimes when I didn't even really know what I was talking about, right? 
at least I looked like it, right? So <clears throat> it will always be to the right, okay? So that's a correct way to draw a fillet weld symbol. Um, <clears throat> so now to know which side of this joint that we're gonna put it on, we have to look at which side of the reference line it's at, okay? So in this case, we have two options here. We have an A and a B side of the joint. Given this configuration, this weld call out, would it be A or B, the weld placement? It would be A. <laughs> I had to check there for a second. It would be A because our weld symbol is on other side, the top of the reference line, meaning the other side from where the arrow is, right? This would be arrow side, so if it was on the bottom only, then it would be location B. But in this case, it's only on the top of the reference line, so it would be location A. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Um, and again, we'll reiterate some of this stuff when we get to some of the other videos, but hopefully that makes sense so far. Now, sometimes we have both sides of the joint. So we would have a weld symbol on both the top, the other side, or and the arrow side. And then in that case, we'd have weld placement on both sides, okay? Okay, now I added this other joint. This is a whole nother joint in this weldment because I wanted to talk about uh, a little bit more about weld placement. Sometimes we will have a tail area here that has some extra information. And one thing that we will see very, very often is like a typical call out, right? We might have TYP here for typical, which means typical joints in the weldment will be, will be welded the same as this call out. So in this case, we have both sides of the joint welded here with this weld call out. But then we also see that it says typical in the joint, in the uh, tail section of the welding symbol. So then we know, okay, well this joint is typical, meaning it's the same configuration. So we're also going to put welds there as well, okay? But we're only gonna do that if we see typical put here. We're just not gonna assume just because a joint looks the same or has the same configuration that it's going to be welded the same. Okay, so a lot of times we will have two different weld callouts if they're supposed to be different. So we could have one on the top here, and then we could have another one over here or over here because this is a whole different joint. Okay, so we might only have one side um, specified over here. Okay, so then this would be wrong. So we only, only want to do that if we see that typical notation. Uh, I've also seen where instead of typical, it'll say like four times instead. 4x, something like that. And then we know, okay, well, there's two spaces here, but there's two more. So they, you know, uh, they put 4x here so that we know that it's four different times that we're going to do the same, uh, the same call out. Okay. So that has to do with weld placement and side significance. And we always want to start with that. Okay. Again, sometimes we get excited. We see a weld call out we assume things, we always want to kind of stop ourselves, slow down, look at side significance so that we get that right and we don't end up uh, making mistakes. Okay? So now, we've talked about side significance. Now let's talk about our... Um, <clears throat> are different locations of the welding symbol uh, of the welding symbol here and what those mean okay so we still have an other side side significance but now let's say we have a number here in this case one quarter. To the left of the welding symbol always has to do with the size of the weld. So let me repeat that. To the left of the weld symbol always has to do with the size of the weld. 
Now, that'll mean different things depending on the, the type of weld that we're looking at. Again, with this video, we're going to focus on fillet welds. So with a fillet weld, at least with AWS standards, uh, the size of the fillet weld is not necessarily what you think. So I come across a lot of new welders and, you know, they may look at this joint if we turn it to the side. Say we're taking a look at this joint and this is our weld here. You guys are getting to enjoy my wonderful drawing skills. Um, I probably should have been an art professor with this fine artistic talent I have, but you know, I'm, I became a welder instead. So anyway, so if we turn this to the side, a lot of welders would think, okay, well a quarter inch is the size of my fillet weld. So then that must mean that it should be a quarter of an inch wide, right? That's actually not correct. Okay, the size of a fillet weld, if we blow up this fillet weld here, would actually have to do more with our profile. Okay, for AWS standards, that is our leg length. So in this case, we'd have a quarter of an inch. This is the leg of our weld, meaning from the toe, sorry, from the root to the toe on both sides, and they should be equal. Okay, in a perfect world, these will be equal in order to get an acceptable weld profile. So that'd be a quarter of an inch. Well, how do we check that without cutting the weld? Well, we really can't, okay? Um, the only way that we can check that is with a fillet weld gauge. I mean, you will get a good, you'll get a good uh, sense of this as you put more and more welds down, and especially if you're measuring your own welds, uh, doing any type of testing where you cut them open, that sort of thing, you'll really get a good sense for it. But, um, you know, one way that you can do it is by using a fillet weld gauge. And a fillet weld gauge will be a piece of metal that you will be able to put in here that you will butt up against the base material. And it'll have, uh, it'll have lines here which mark the distance that the weld is supposed to be. So if this is a quarter inch fillet weld gauge, it'll have a line at the quarter inch mark. And then you will want to make sure that your toe at least lines up or goes over that line in order to have an acceptable weld for that size. Okay. And again, we want them, if there's only one number here, then we would want that to be equal. Okay. And that's the standard for an acceptable weld is equal leg lengths. We don't want, you know, one leg length to be real long and one to be real short or vice versa. We just want them to be about the same uh, length for a good uh, weld profile. But there are times where we might have, you know, three eighths by one quarter. Okay, so for whatever reason, they would like you to make a profile that is a lot longer on one side or a little bit longer on one side for whatever reason, for clearance reasons or something like that. So sometimes they will have like a three eighths by one quarter or two different numbers or something like that. That is uh, something that we do see, but it's not very common. Um, but typically what they will do is they will uh, specify which leg uh, is supposed to be which size on the print so that you know, because you know, by the weld call out, it doesn't really tell you uh, which side should be which, okay? One other thing I wanted to specify is that some of the European codes um, will specify you know, it would be uh, using uh, the metric system. So they may have like a six here for like a six millimeter uh, well. That still refers to the size, but usually those codes will actually um, specify the throat. Okay, so that's a little bit different and they have different gauges to measure that, but that would be the distance from the root to the face of the well, which actually makes a little bit more sense because that tells us a lot more about the strength of the weld is the throat. Uh, just for instance, you know, we could have a very, very concave weld that still goes out to the, the quarter inch or whatever, the six millimeters. Uh, but, you know, if it's very, very concave, then we don't have a lot of reinforcement there. So uh, there's some arguments there about what's better. But uh, just so you know, if you ever see a metric number here, 
um, you know, you may want to look at what code they're following because they could be uh, talking about the throat rather than the leg of the well. Okay. All right. So that has to do with the size of our well. Okay. For fillet wells. Now, to the right of this symbol, we have uh, some other things that are specified. I'm going to erase this. I'm going to go back to our quarter. Okay. Now we have to the right of the weld symbol in this location. Uh, if there is nothing here, we can assume that this is a continuous weld, that we will place the weld relative to side significance. We'll put it on the right side of the joint. Okay. I, and by right, I mean the correct side of the joint. This is the top of the reference line, which means other side from the arrow. So it would be correct to be on this side. So if we took this joint and turned it this way, we don't have anything on this side, which refers to length. So then we know that this is what's called a continuous weld for the entire length of the joint. Okay. Now, if we have a number here, say we have a two here, then we know that that might not be a continuous weld. That could be what's called an intermittent weld or a stitch weld. So in this case, if we only have one number here, that means that there's a two inch long weld, okay? So <clears throat> based on that though, we don't really know where, uh, say this joint is you know, six inches long or eight inches long or whatever, 20 inches long. It's telling us we have a quarter inch size weld and it's only supposed to be two inches long. So usually they may specify in the tail section like centered on joint or, you know, at end relative to whatever, or they may actually draw it right onto the print with an arrow and say, you know, uh, centered or, you know, to this side or something like that. But it's a two inch long weld because the, the first space here to the right of the weld symbol always has to do with length, okay? Now, what may be even more common than that is what we call uh, intermittent or chain intermittent or a staggered chain intermittent weld. And that has to do with when we have length and pitch, okay? So <clears throat> the first number here had to do with length. If we have a dash and then we have another number, that's what's called pitch. And pitch is our distance from center to center of the intermittent welds. So in this case, we'd have a little different configuration. We have a two inch long weld every four inches center to center. So let's go ahead and we'll draw this out. Okay, this is probably not going to be dimensionally accurate, but you'll be able to get the idea. So let's say these are our intermittent welds. Okay, these are a two inch long weld. So all of these are two inches but then they are four inches center to center. Be very careful of this, okay? Because a lot of welders who aren't familiar with this, they may kind of know a little bit about it, but they, they think that, you know, okay, I have length, and then this is the distance between the welds. I've seen that a lot, and I've seen welders you know, that are doing a couple hundred welds on some huge weld mint, um, read the, the weld uh, call out wrong and lay out and tack and weld something uh, completely wrong. And then the supervisor comes up or the inspector comes up and goes, wait a second, what are you doing? You know, this isn't right. And the welder's like, you know, putting his stuff away for putting his or her stuff away for the day, like all, you know, just ready to get out of there. And it's like, Oh, no, go get the grinder, go get the art gouger. You need to fix this. When you got 200 welds on an item and, it, and you did it wrong, oh man, that's a bad day. So make sure you're doing 
center to center. Okay, center to center. So what would be the distance in between these two then? Well, we have a two inch long weld and it's four inches center to center. So four minus two means that we have a two inch space in between. Okay, so again, make sure you know that pitch is center to center of the weld. Okay, it's very, very important. All right, so to the right of that, we have length and pitch, and that's for length and arrangement, okay? Now, we can have both sides the same. We could have a different call out on the, other, on the arrow side of the joint, possibly, that's not very common, but typically we will have the same call out. It's very, very common. So then our, uh, our configuration, if we're looking at it from the top, these welds would be in line with each other on both sides of the joint. That's a chain intermittent weld. Okay. But we could have them staggered. So if they stagger the, these uh, fillet weld symbols, then that means that these are offset. Okay. That would be a staggered chain intermittent weld. We do see that too. Okay, so if you ever see the weld symbols are the same, but they're offset, that means that they're staggered on a joint like this. Okay? <clears throat> now, some other things that we can see is like our supplementary symbols. Um, we could have like a weld all the way around symbol. Okay, so let's say that this was like a um, piece of round bar or a piece of pipe going into a plate or something like that. This means to weld all the way around. So then if our top view looked like this, this was, let's just say that this was a piece of pipe or a piece of round bar fit up there. That means that whatever this weld call out is, let's say it's that same quarter, um, either uh, continuous because we don't have anything here, or let's say it's a one every four inches, or a one every 90 degrees, or something like that. Then we know we weld all the way around, and let's just say it's the one every 90 degrees, then we'd have a one inch weld at the 90 degree locations. Or, you know, whatever the distance is, the circumference around that, we would lay that out and that's how we would weld it. That's a weld all the way around symbol, okay? Um, there's various other supplementary symbols that we can have. Um, <clears throat> like we can have a field weld symbol here, which would be like a little, uh, Flag, okay, a darkened flag means that we weld that in the field. So uh, typically you will have like a shop weld mint that's like a, a pre, you know, fabrication that's done in the shop and then that item is taken out and installed in the field. They will do a field weld symbol um, on the end wherever it attaches to the rest of the components. And uh, that'd be very common to see um, on items that are going out in the field for installation. That's a field weld symbol. Okay, another thing that we can have uh, on these uh, weld symbols for a uh, fillet weld is a contour symbol. Oops. So let's say we have, let's go back to our T joint. This is our T-joint, and this is our fillet weld symbol on the arrow side. But let's say that we have a line here on the face of this fillet weld. We could have a variety of different things. We could have a flat line, or we could have a line that is concave or convex. OK? 
okay? That gives us the contour that they're asking for. So let's just say we have a flat line. So we don't have these two, we just have a flat line. That means that the, our fillet weld should have a flat contour, okay? Um, <clears throat> now, there can also be a letter here just say we could have G for grinding, we could have C for chipping, F for flame cut, M for machining. And that's how the process that we use to achieve that contour. So probably the most common thing we'll see is a G for grinding. Sometimes we won't see it at all. Like it doesn't, they don't specify. It doesn't really matter to them how we do it as long as the weld contour is what it specifies here. So technically, if we weld this completely flat um, and it has a perfectly flat face, then we don't need to do anything because it's already in that contour, right? But this just tells us that, uh, you know, if, if we end up with a convex um, face to it, so it has a little bit of a reinforcement to the face, then we need to grind that down until it's nice and flush and flat, okay? So that specifies that. But we could have concave or we could also have uh, convex as well. Okay, so that's uh, called a contour symbol. Okay, so now with the basic elements of this system, uh, let's just look at a few examples and let's see, uh, let's kind of test your, uh, your knowledge so far on uh, weld placement and things like that. Okay, all right, so we have weld call out here. We can see that it's on the top of the reference line for a fillet weld. We have an eighth inch weld, right? That refers to the size of the fillet weld because it's to the left of the weld symbol. Now, what's really important though is, is our, uh, our side significance, right? Now, I've kind of thrown you a little bit of a curveball here because it's not always so easy to tell, right? Well, a lot of times we don't just have a T-joint like that, you know, on our print and that's all that we're welding. A lot of times there's a lot of different joints that are in close proximity to each other. So we have to be careful. So we have a reference line to the top of the reference line is our weld symbol. So where would our weld placement be? Would it be in the A location, the B location, the C location, or the D location? It would be in the B location right here. Now, why is that? Well, the first thing that we look at is the, is the reference line and the side significance. It's at the top of the reference line, okay? Our weld symbol is on the top of the reference line. So that means other side from our arrow, okay? So our arrow is pointing to this joint here. This is a whole nother joint over here. So we might, not, we might have a, another weld call out up here or over here that will be pointing to this joint. But in this case, we're just talking about this joint here and we have an other side side significance, so our fillet weld would be placed in the B location, okay? Now, again, if we had a tail here and it said typical or something, and we had a weld on both sides, then we might have uh, be able to, uh, you know, put a weld on a whole different joint. But in this case, we're only talking about this one joint, okay? So that's our side significance for a fillet weld. All right, so here's another weld call out uh, for a fillet weld. <clears throat> this time we have a little different, uh, a little different um, information on here, right? So we have uh, before the uh, the weld symbol here, we have a number, and then uh, behind the weld symbol we have some more numbers. So what would be the size of this fillet weld? Should be this number here, which is one quarter of an inch, okay? So that would be our leg length per AWS standards, okay? And then what about the numbers back here? So we have a one is what? The length of the fillet weld? That's correct, so this refers to the length, and the second number here would be the pitch. So in this case, where would our weld placement be? Would it be on side A or side B? All refers to side significance again, right? 
So the bottom of the reference line would be arrow side, which the arrow is pointing to this side of the joint. So our weld should be on the A side. Okay. What is the length of our fillet weld? One inch. So we're going to have one inch welds and they're every four inches. So these are one inch long welds, right? And they are four inches center to center, which means that our distance between them, center to center, is four inches, right? But what is our actual distance from the end of one weld to the beginning of the other? Three inches, right? Because we have a one inch weld and it's every four inches center to center. So four minus one is three inches in between. Okay, so this is the basic elements of the system for fillet welds. Hopefully you found this helpful. Um, I am going to do some other videos that are more in depth, other types of welds, including groove welds, which are a lot more complicated and have a lot more uh, joint configuration type uh, information in the weld symbols, which, which can get pretty complicated. Uh, but once you understand how it works, it becomes uh, fairly simple. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, please uh, don't forget to like uh, the, this video and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any more uh, good information. All right, thanks for watching.